Welcome to another edition of It's All Relative. As always, I'm Josh. And I'm Timothy. And we are rolling along with number 14. Yes, sir. 14. What's going on, my man? Doing well, brother. How are you? Uh, All good, my man. Everything's good. Yes. I'm happy to be back in the studio laying another one of these down. Yes, sir. Welcome back, brother. Nice. Yes. Same same to you. Thanks, man. I want to hit a few events uh, that happened since the last time we've been together. All right. All right. First being on March 31st, New York State became the 16th state to legalize recreational marijuana. Congratulations. Number 16 out of 50. Yeah, man, what a great memorable day. Yeah. It's it's amazing. Yes, sir, you know? it is. You know, I feel like this is something that I've fought for for so long, you know, and, you know, lost many battles. Right. But won the war. Yeah. You know what I'm the saying? The final I, war. I, that's how I feel. It, it's great. I'm stoked that Andrew Cuomo and the state of New York finally made a good decision. They did. Yeah, you know, shout out to Andrew Cuomo for really getting it done. You know what? Shout out to Cuomo. You know, yeah. yeah. A lot of people have negative things to say about him. You know, I don't know too much. You know what I'm saying? I don't, right. I don't get too deep into into any of that. I do know that um, he's the man that got it done. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Exactly. And there's been plenty of people before him that have had the chance or opportunity to right get it done and, and they, they squandered failed. it yep you know and for the fact that cuomo got this done you know i back him you okay know, you know i respect it yeah absolutely yeah um, off of that strength alone yeah for sure i would have backed anybody who would have actually gotten this done you know back when uh obama was running for president you know the right. first time it was mentioned like he did mention he, w- he was for you know yeah he uh, was definitely pro. for marijuana yeah, yeah and if he would have gotten that done, you know, that would have been amazing. It would have changed everything, yeah. But at the time, if you really think about it, I'm not sure if you remember, like, everybody was against it. Like, you know, there was, mm-hmm. maybe it was like uh, like 10 or 11 states that mm-hmm. were, like, legalized at the time, mm-hmm. which which says a lot if we're on 16. Right. But, um, yeah, everybody everybody was just against it. Like, there was still, like, that uh, that stigma of, oh, my God, you know. Yeah. You know. Crazy weed or whatever. We refer madness is what they call it, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, the wild thing though, too, is that, you know, if Trump was crazy, right? Right. That, like, but if Trump was the one who would have gotten this done, everybody would have backed it, him. I would have backed the you, shit out of you Trump. Go. You there know you what go. I'm saying? Yeah. And for those of you who know me, that's that's crazy for me to say. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which, but, which speaks to a lot of how much you love what happened. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and he had he had a chance. He had the opportunity, but yeah, he, he, he ain't do it. So he ain't do it either. Cuomo was the man. He, he was the man for New York. Uh, absolutely. And, and and you know, right now, um, because we live in the state of New York, that's that's all I care about. Exactly. <laughs> you exactly. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's all that matters. So. It's it's kind of interesting, uh you if I can, may, if I may ask a question, has this been the first time you have ever lived in a state where it has been legal? Yes. Okay. That's why. Th- that's why this is. Um, it's historic for me because in every state that I've lived in, um, it's always been illegal, and in some places more illegal than others. Correct. Yeah. Um, which is wild because yeah, in some of the states that I lived in, they took cannabis very serious of course which i I didn't understand i I just you know still to this day it's it's a cultural thing um like i was saying with the whole reefer madness some places just took it more heavy like oh my god this is the devil you know that's why like some place well from where i come from in georgia where i was born Mm -hmm. they like you may as well be in like treason or you know like murder or something to somebody in georgia no absolutely Yeah. yeah i i um because when i lived in the state of virginia right I've never seen um, like that's how they treated it there, of course. and I've never seen it. Like Notice that, that it's southern because I lived in yeah, yeah right because and I grew up in New York. It's right. not really like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, New York they don't care too much, man. And down in Florida, um, I don't know. I mean, because where I lived at in Florida it was such like a touristy spot. Um, okay, I guess there was touristy spot, spots allow that. Yeah, you yeah. know, it was always. But like I said, it's always been you know it's always been illegal Illegal. in in every state that i've lived in so for this to happen is absolutely amazing i'm i'm stoked yeah you should be i support it 
thank you, Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brother Cuomo, you n- did it. You know, um, in my opinion, though, the greatest part about this whole thing um, is that people who were convicted of marijuana-related crimes will have their records expunged. Now, I found that to be very amazing, to uh, just completely wipe it out. Amazing is a great word. Yeah. Um, that could, because that is amazing. Yeah. That, and that's what should should happen right and you know what i'm saying because because it shouldn't have ever happened no you, you it know shouldn't what I'm have happened in the first place right like people who have um had big chunks of their lives ruined because because of this yeah. you know imagine imagine going in for like baby time possession and then going for like 10 years because you're trying to escape the prison system and it just gets worse for you yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean it's crazy it's horrible it's horrible so as of you know as of uh, what did we say? March thirty first. Thirty first. You must be twenty one years or older, right? To to partake, right, 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 right. But people can legally possess up to three ounces, okay, while traveling. I did see. I'm not too sure because I know a lot of um different rules and laws and stuff are still everything's still being put together. Mm-hmm. But um, I have seen a bunch of things. Um. The amount allowed in a house in a house is up to is five pounds. Okay, so it's it's five pounds. Yeah, which which is a, That's a, a decent amount. That's a good amount. Yeah, yeah. which is cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. You know what I'm yeah, the law permits an individual to grow three mature plants and three immature plants. Oh, okay, or a maximum of twelve plants per household, no matter how many people reside there. Now do. Okay, that's interesting. Do they have, like, when it's three mature, three immature, they have to, like, cycle out the, you know, like, cut it down and break it down to, to have the immature plants? Yeah. I'm and then ass- rotate some new ones Yeah, in? I'm assuming that's interesting. why they set it up like that, or they said that, God, to keep the cycle like that. But I, I don't know, quite understand that. But I, I guess the bottom line, the main thing was was 12 plants. 12 plants. Maximum. You gotcha. Know what I'm Which is still quite a bit. Yeah. Because it's a good deal. each plant can produce quite a bit you know depending on how it was how it was taken care of right if you take good care of it it, it'll give you a lot absolutely for sure now one thing i did like a lot about this law Mm -hmm. they're just taking a lot of the money that they're going to be making from the future ventures let's say and they're just going to reinvest it back into infrastructure back into education they're like going to have a fund. I, I think it was like forty uh, percent of whatever they make. I think it was beautiful. I did see that's um, amazing. Forty percent, yeah, yeah. It is amazing. Um, like I said, that this was historic. It was a great it was historic. move. Yeah, great move and beneficial on, on on so many levels. Right, and people should be so happy. Yeah, you know they should I'm be saying? happy. System. And and honestly, looking at the system, I'm really just shocked at what Cuomo pulled. I'm not. I'm mm-hmm. no fan of Cuomo, but okay, what he pulled off. When it came to like uh, getting this law passed, mm-hmm. it's like freaking amazing. Nice. Like I had a friend that lives in Colorado. He was like, "Yeah, you know, how do you like how do you like what happened?" I was like, "Bro, this is like the most amazing thing. Don't be surprised if your state is looking to our state on how to do things. Yes, you you were legalized first, right? But I don't remember Colorado reinvesting like a large amount of this money back into its state. Yeah, it's you smart. know what I mean? It's really smart. smart. Yeah, yeah, smart stuff." So, but either way, um, New York, enjoy. Yeah, enjoy for sure. You know, you want to hit on another news story or topic? Another news story. Well, speaking of like uh, talking about politics and everything, I have my man uh, Andrew Yang is running for the mayor to try and replace Bill de Blasio. Yeah. Really? I, I don't know anything about Yeah. So, about I mean, he, well, he was actually just in for a kidney stone. So, shout outs to him for making it out of the, he like, like they discharged him and everything. He's good. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's actually going to... He, he, you know Andrew Yang? Mm-hmm. So Andrew Yang, um, he was one of the candidates for 2020 on the Democratic side. Yeah. Okay. And a lot... Just a little, a little short. He's Asian American. Mm-hmm. Um, he's all about education. Mm-hmm. I, w- I was all for him. Right. Yeah, because he's pushing education, which no other candidate was doing. You know, he, ha- he has a pin where he just it says math. Right on. on there. He is like my hero. Mm-hmm. Right. And he's not like really like too, too, too liberal like uh, Astasio Cortez or even like Bernie Sanders mm-hmm. and stuff like that. He's a little bit more moderate, but the greatest thing about him is that he pushes education 
and he wants he wanted to push marijuana. So mm-hmm. now he he has even if he wins and he's mayor of New York, it's mm-hmm. even easier for him. My man, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And um, unlike Bill De Blasio, I don't think he even cares about marijuana at all, which is a shame. Yeah, because it's all about reinvesting. Mm-hmm. But he's running for mayor now, so I think that that's amazing. Nice. I think yeah. it's really cool. You you will start to hear more about him as it goes on. Trust me. Nice. Well, yeah, he's a great guy. From everything that you said, um, yeah, sounds great. Yeah, sounds awesome. Yeah, and he's like the best known candidate right now that nice. everyone's talking about. Nice. Well, good luck. Yeah, good luck to him. Let's touch on um an event that happened um Friday night, sure. April second, around eleven p.m. All right. It was reported that DMX suffered an overdose. Well, shit. Okay. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. All right. Yeah, let's talk about it. The overdose triggered a heart attack. Oh, wow. I didn't know it was that serious. Doctors have cautioned that he might not pull through. Wow. As of this moment, you know, when wow. we record this, as we record this. Right. You know, DMX had suffered uh, years of drug abuse. Right. You it's know. on and off. Right. You know, thoughts and prayers to him and his family. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, so man, it sucks, man. It's rough. Um, are you a fan of DMX? Yeah, I'm a yeah. fan of old DMX. Right. <laughs> like real old DMX, yeah. I was listening to some of his music coming on down here. Nice. Yeah. Do you have a uh, favorite album that he did? or? No, not mm-hmm. really. Not really. I can't say I'm too, I'm too, too deep into him like that, though. No, see. But he always throws good hooks, though. I was a fan of DMX back in the day. Um, I definitely two albums that I really, really enjoyed was um, "It's Dark and Hell Is Hot." It's dark and okay. And okay. the second, probably being my favorite, was "Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood." Okay. Um, you got any favorite songs that he did? Would you like any? Man, you know what? As a matter of fact, I do. Mm-hmm. And f- from "Flesh of Flesh, Blood of My Blood," my niggas. Mm-hmm. I like that one. Keep your shit the hardest. That one was pretty good. We don't give a fuck. That's also really good. So yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right what about you, bro? Uh, of course. Um, like I said, I I was been a DMX fan for a while, or you know, when I was younger and whatnot. My all time favorite song, um, ever from DMX was um was slipping. I I be- I slipping. felt okay. yeah. I felt like this was was me the song was 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 written for me for many years you know what i'm saying that's and that's right. how i feel i love the songs deep means a lot to me another song that i uh one of my favorites that i also thought and felt like it was written for me was um lord give me a sign okay god bless and uh, you think it was speaking to you when when yeah both those songs yeah man, both of them Yes, like I said, slipping um, for part of my life definitely, absolutely was was for me. Right. Same thing with Lord, give me a sign. Another one. I mean, there were a lot that I liked, but mm-hmm. one that I used to to bump hard to when I was when I was a young kid in high school was um, what's my name? Yeah. Okay. That song was dope and had a killer bass. The bass, it. yeah, the bass blew out the speakers. So, but um, let me let me ask you this quick question then. Yeah. Um. When you hear like those two songs that you were talking about, mm-hmm. how do you feel listening to it now or thinking about it now and knowing that he just went through, you know, the drug, the the overdose and the heart attack? Man, I don't know. I mean, some of his words and messages were really good in those songs, but, um, you know, um, I guess it, some of his actions and whatnot fell a little short. A little short, unfortunately. right? Unfortunately. So. Yeah. Hopefully. It's a reminder that we're human. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, once again, um, we've talked about in the past, drug addiction is real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It really and, is. You know, it's tough, you know, and you can see. Yeah. You know, relapse is a real it's thing. Real, so. re- very real. Yeah. And also, I just throw it out there to anybody out there that listens to this. If if you're suffering from drug addiction, you know what I mean? Like, seek help as best you can. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with asking There's for help. There's nothing wrong. So, yeah, I mean, um, like we said, thoughts and prayers to uh, DMX, uh, you know, to him, to his family, to his people. To his peoples, yeah. We're hoping for the best. Yeah, we are hoping for the right. best. That man has to live. Right. For real. One last thing I just wanted to mention real quick. I, I've seen it's a big buzz right now. Unfortunately, I don't have too much to say about it because I do not have HBO Max. Okay. But... 
the big news, the big story, the big movie that everyone's talking about that all I can see is the Godzilla vs. King Kong. Oh, movie. I thought Godzilla vs. King Kong? I know yeah, it's, it's big. All, <laughs> that's all I've seen. That's all people have been talking about when I went to, you know, I've, I've gone to, you know, people's houses and whatnot and like right there on the screen. Jeez. So, but like I said, um, I unfortunately do not have HBO Max, so I haven't seen it yet, but um, definitely something I'd like to see. I want to... You know, listeners should um, use that message option and let us know how that movie is. Been. Yeah, tell us how that movie is. Absolutely, we want to know. Um, if, I was gonna say, if you got HBO Max, you can also tell us about that Zack Snyder cut of uh, the or what is that? The um, Justice League. I was about to say Avengers. I'm all about Marvel, yeah. but uh, yeah, that Justice League. Let us know about that too, as well as this Godzilla movie. Yeah, just like the Godzilla movie, um, we can get right into it. Uh, today's yes, episode is going to be a perfect opportunity for all our listeners to use the message option on Anchor. And what we mean by that is, you know, our story today is going to leave people with, with a lot of different opinions and thoughts. You know, it's, um, you know, people are going to feel different. And that is what we want to know about. You know, that's yeah. what we want to hear. We want to yeah, know. We definitely want to hear. We want to know the opinions or thoughts about what they feel Right. You know, about about today's story. But the um So hit that messaging button. Send something in. Absolutely. Um go to the anchor page. Yes, sir. Right. Yep. And you hit the message, you can leave that voice message and you just in fact, just tell us about this episode. You want to give us a shout out, that's cool, but you know, holler back on the feedback on this episode. Absolutely. This today's episode is a great opportunity because there's a lot of things that we're looking for feedback. Let us know about the Godzilla and King Kong movie. Yes, sir. And today's story, by the end of it, it'll definitely leave you feeling a certain way. You know what I'm saying? And okay. and we want to know, how, yeah. how do you feel? So today we're going to talk about Tom and Eileen Lonergan. Okay. All right. Um, are you familiar with their names? No, I am not. You're going to have to... Put me on to this one. Yeah, um, I'm willing to bet good money that um, most people, 90%, you know what I'm saying, 95% of people, when we mention that name, they are they probably don't know right. who, who they are. Okay, well, I'm okay. glad to be in the 90 then. No, yeah, you're good. <laughs> but their story is either going to be, you know, it's going to sound tragic to mm-hmm. some people. Other people may feel like this whole thing was just a premeditated plan. Okay. Okay. Sounds devious. Yeah, you know, however you perceive this story, it, it's um, like I said, it's gonna leave people feeling certain ways for sure, different okay. ways. So Tom and Eileen were both from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Okay, okay. Tom thirty three, Eileen was twenty eight. They met at Louisiana State University, which is also where they got married. Eileen was a big into scuba diving. All right, and. She got her husband, Tom, into it as well. Okay, big scuba. Picked up the hobby together, right? So the couple gets a chance for an opportunity to dive at St. Crispin's Reef, which is a popular place to dive in. Uh, It's the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Okay, beautiful reef. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's the world's largest coral reef system. Right. So absolutely beautiful place to see. Lots of fish, I'm sure. Right. Right. Really cool. Right. So on January 25th, 1998, the couple boarded a scuba boat with 24 other passengers. All right. The dive company they used was called Outer Edge. And their destination was only about 25 miles off the coast of Queensland. All right. The captain of the boat that they were on, um, he went by the name of Naren. Naren. Yeah. Got it. Once they arrived, the passengers put their gear on and jumped in. So are, are you familiar with like um, how, you know, how these little dive trips or snorkeling trips on like vacations go or? Not really, not too, too much. I mean, I get the general gist of it from a friend that dives as well. Okay. Yeah, but he has never really gone to detail, so. Okay. You want to fill me in? Yeah, I, I mean, so. What I've gathered, what usually happens is, you know, a boat usually brings a certain amount of people. In in this case, there was 26 total people who were diving, okay? So what they do is when when they get to the certain spot where everyone's going to dive, they have their wetsuits on, they put their 
you know, my scuba tanks, scuba tanks and, and the gear and, and everything, weight belts and yeah, yeah everything right. on, and they all jump in all at once. Okay, but there's a um, a person on board who's uh, who's, who's counting. You yeah, know, there, as they there's go a in. head count, right? Okay, gotcha. So they have a head count to see how many people go in, right? Okay, and then um, obviously. He's got to keep track of when, when people come out. Right. There's another head count. Right. Check you know? them all off. Right. The time limit, like usually when people go on these trips, what usually happens is they all, you know, once everyone's in the water, you all go down together and, right. and basically stay in the, stay same, in the same spot. Area. Yeah, yeah, same and, general area. Right. And you you have a certain amount of um time because air, you know what I'm saying? Air. In, gotcha. in your tank. So that's how people usually know, you know, how long their uh, trip's going to be. Right. Usually, you know, if if the tank holds like an hour. Right. Then you have an hour. Yeah, pretty I much. Was, I was actually also thinking, I'm just guessing that maybe they pair them off in groups too. So it's not going to be like an odd number of people that jump in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing anyways. Good call. Actually, yeah. probably. I mean, yeah. that, that would make sense. Yeah, it would make sense. So Eileen and Tom, right? They were both skilled and knowledgeable divers. Okay. Right? Okay. So the time limit on their air, it would have let them have about a 40 minute, like we said, 40 minute dive. All right. All right. Now, obviously we don't know exactly what happened, but it said, it, it was it was said, but never quote unquote rep- officially reported uh-huh. that being that they were knowledgeable divers, they wanted to swim off a little. Oh, so they wanted to go off on their own. By a themselves bit. a little to explore okay. a little more, you Jesus. know? Which they did. Right, of okay. course. Yeah. Uh, when the two surface, they see nothing but blue sky and the ocean water in every direction. And they realize that they have been left behind. Wow. Yes. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And let's go back to the head count. What, what, they, did they not count properly? So they, they just missed two people and miscounted? Yeah. So what happened is or what was reported was that when they were counting the people, when, when the time got up, everyone was getting out of the boat. They were making the head count. Uh-huh. They had the correct number, but as they were counting the okay. people getting out, for some reason, two people who were already counted in were counted again, jumped back into the water. Oh, wow. Okay. So it throws off the count a little bit. They're, you know, checking everything off oh they fucked up yeah and it seems like you know at the end you know it looks real quick okay, okay we had it two people jump back in all right um word we all word, good 20 seconds let, let's, let's roll. bounce yeah wow and you know I, at that time too they were you know if you were to just quickly glance on the ocean and look there's nobody uh, nobody else bobbing you know right. their head's not about no, nobody surfaced right. so it looks like everybody's because here because the other two knows. are still underwater right and right. that's what happened and tom and eileen since they May have swam off uh-huh. a little, uh-huh. maybe not paying attention exactly to time and whatnot. Right. Realize, you know, that, okay, our air's getting maybe a little low yeah, or, or it's time to, yeah. to surface and let's go. And as you surface out of the ocean and you see nothing. Literally nothing. Except for ocean. Wow. That's a... A nightmare that, feeling. Oh, 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 you, and that is the reason why I don't do shit like that. <laughs> uh, even back to the skydive, skydiving episode, never. It won't happen. So I you, can't even do that either. So you would never, um, no way. never scuba dive? Especially ever. not after this. <laughs> not after this story. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'll be well, right on the boat. What about, okay, what about snorkeling? Snorkeling is a little different than uh, scuba diving. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Because yeah, snorkeling know. is just like the mask and, and the mouthpiece. Right. And you stay on top on, of like the you water. On. Yeah. Because you got to breathe, like the, the, the mouth piece things got to stay above the water okay so it's more like a swimming exercise type of deal right and 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 you can see like yeah what's under scuba diving is actually submerging yourself all the way to the bottom and whatnot and breathing underwater right i mean i i completely believe that the technology works i'm not afraid of diving like that Mm -hmm. there's no fucking way i'm getting (laughs) getting left behind like that so off of that strength alone no way (laughs) you know um a little sidebar whatever but um 
little quick shout out to uh, my mom and pops. You know, they um, they were certified scuba divers. Oh, for real? Yeah. Wow, shout out to the them. Yeah. yeah, God bless. How long did it take them to receive certification for it? I don't really remember. I was pretty young when this all happened. Okay. Um, but I do remember that um, they were really into it, especially um, especially my pops. He, he used to love that. And um, wow, bless him. Yeah, I remember him. Um, there's a place where we go in vacation, you know, our families and mm-hmm. whatnot. And um, it's up in the Adirondacks. I think I've mentioned yeah, it yeah, before. Yeah, you mentioned it before. Beautiful and, place. Um, yeah, beautiful place. And uh, he used to scuba dive that lake like all the time. You know, he was all yeah. over. Yeah. You know, and he owned it. Scary. Right. You know what I'm saying? But um, there was a times when, um, you know, he would want me to try and whatnot. And uh-huh. I remember one time, like literally getting all the gear on, getting everything you know right. everything's secure and then all right we and we, and we go down right and i remember going down and as we're going down first off the pressure the pressure yep my ears bro they start like I, so they tell you to to pinch your to nose, pinch your nose. And, and and breathe to to let your ears pop right. or whatever same thing if you're in a plane too okay yeah um so i was trying to do that but um, it wasn't really working. And then we got to the bottom. And then, like, we're kind of just going around. My ears are still, you know, I'm a little claustrophobic. Okay, I shouldn't say a little. I'm very claustrophobic. Yeah, it's, it's okay to be very claustrophobic. So, yeah. like, when we're down there, you know, um, my you, flippers start kicking shit up. And, like, shit starts to get all foggy. And, and then, face, like, yeah. all of a sudden, like, I start to panic. panic because then course. I start to think, like about like jaws or like movies yeah. like, even though i'm in like fresh water like then i then i know there's no sharks but like you know what if there was something you don't crazy. know crazy <laughs> yeah, and like exactly <laughs> when you wear a mask it kind of cuts off your peripheral yeah. vision right right you know right what i'm saying yeah and uh, it's all murky it's cloudy it's, it's claustrophobic everything. for you and, and i'm starting to panic and i feel like when like when i look to the side like you know, I just envisioned or pictured like looking to the side and seeing like a huge like shark, shark. thing or something biting me, and like mm-hmm. you know, I panicked. Yeah, <laughs> I panicked, and like I, I was like tapping my pops, and we was like, Yo, "He's like, yeah, we gotta go we up, gotta go up." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then that was Get us it. out of here. That was it for me, and unfortunately, that was the only only time that uh, me and my pops had done that together. So unfortunately, it wasn't the best time the best. it you know happens man it happens. but um we still did it together yeah it was a lesson for him too man he was I like panicked. Yeah, you panicked <laughs> you're like oh no no yeah. b- bro i just said I, there's no fucking way i would even just even do it so yeah. it's fear the fear is real no but and I, it's okay but i tell you what and i'll be dead ass that you would never ever ever find me scuba diving in the ocean at all there's no ever, way never so, not after this story yeah, right. <laughs> for real so that was just a quick sidebar yeah but, um, let's get back to um so two days later okay. okay so tom and eileen you know surface right boat's gone they're alone in for the two ocean. days okay jesus two days later the captain of the outer edge naren found a bag on his boat which had the lonergan's wallet passports and other personal items in it so not on, not only were okay, just continue, just continue. That's crazy. You know, no, and, and that was the first time anyone had realized that, that they, were, they were gone. Yeah. Wow. Right. Two days. Two days. So nobody like thought to do like a head count on you know day one after you know how's everyone doing you know checking in or anything. Yeah. You know, well, it was like a tourist thing. Like you know what I'm saying. Oh, so like they were staying at like one like a little hotel and whatnot and and i know like when i had looked at doing some research on this story their shoes people had found their shoes that were left on the boat but people right. had assumed that maybe they had just forgotten them and they walked barefoot back to their hotel right and they didn't need their shoes right typical of a, of a right yeah nobody cruise. found their bag though until like two days later Jesus. and then realizing like oh shit um wallets passports Passport, yeah you know um these people are are, are missing are missing are we, legit missing uh, you know what i'm saying right time to panic right so um let's take a quick break All right. my man let's but do um it. before we do that um fans please continue to show us and the podcast your love and support 
Please. Find us on Apple, Spotify, Anchor, YouTube, and Google. And Google. Yes. And by using the platform of your choice, please subscribe, follow, comment, share. Help continue to let the world know about It's All Relative. Please. Five-star rating. Bless it, too. Yes, please. Leave that five-star rating. Yes, sir. And with that being said, we'll be right back. All right. So I have a question for our listeners out there. Do you own a computer? Are you having trouble with broken screens, data backup issues, password reset problems, virus spyware removal, software installation issues? If so, Slipstream Repair Computer Electronic Solutions has you covered. Contact Timothy Latunde at 845-204-1712. The email is ss.sho16 at gmail.com. Once again, that is 845-204-1712. And the email is ss.sho16 at gmail.com. Call or email to schedule a free consultation. Welcome back to It's All Relative. So thus far, my man, dive trip gone super bad. Hella bad. What would you do if you were in this situation? If I was in that situation, honestly, yeah. as them, the, yeah. the victim? Yeah. <laughs> Just die, shit. Just die. I mean, what can you? What else can you do if you, you come up and you don't see anything? I, I mean, I guess... I would try to like find where land is, but if uh-huh. it was like a tourist thing, they probably wouldn't even know how to like, you know, whatever geolocation they need to do to figure out where land is. Right. And they were, um, remember 25 miles out off. Even you know worse. Yeah. So what do you do? Land was probably pretty far. Yeah. And once you are submerged out of the water and you're looking around, yeah. Panic. Yeah, you panic. There's nothing. Exactly. I don't know, man. That's probably. And when did you say this happened? This was back in '98. Yeah. Okay. So there's no so. cell phones. No, you know, nothing. I would say modern to us right. that would help them in that situation. Yeah. No. No cell phones. No. Yeah. Nothing. Even screaming or you know trying to yell yeah. for help. There's, there's no nothing. Way. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. Twenty five miles out. Yeah. Nobody's hearing you. Yeah, that's like uh, nightmare situations, yeah. like stuff that you would um, dream about in, in nightmares. In nightmares, <laughs> yeah. We, we'll keep it there for sure because <laughs> so, I, I ain't scuba diving. But right. yeah, I hear you. Right. So remember, two full days have passed and Tom and Eileen have been stranded in the ocean with no food, water, or help. Jesus. Two days. Two I can't days. even imagine um, a few hours, but two days. Like, yeah. Two days, That's that's... You know, you're spending an entire night in the ocean. That's scary. Yeah. You know? Like, what comes out at night? At night you know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, I mean, you also get fatigued a lot earlier, too, because, I mean, two days, it's fine if you're, like, on land mm-hmm. and you're, like, sitting around. You know, you maybe you'll waste away a little bit, it, but it really wouldn't kick in until, like, day three, day four, day five. But if you're in the water and you're just, like, on the water, you're, you're like, trying to stay afloat. You have all this heavy material, so I'm assuming they probably just tried to get rid of all the heavy stuff that mm-hmm. they could that wasn't like a life preserver or whatever. Right. To try and lighten their load mm-hmm. and hope that somebody would come back into their location. Right. The current is extremely strong. Yeah. You, know, you would be super tired. You wouldn't be able to last. Uh, exactly. If, especially if you were trying to swim against the current. Impossible. Impossible. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah. So maybe they did try to swim, too. Quite possible. Quite possible. Right? Because, yeah. I mean, we don't know, you know? Right. But um, they could have tried to swim, right? But I'm like we said, um, swimming against the current would, would be impossible. It would be impossible. <laughs> the, the water is beautiful and it is strong. Yeah. It'll just take you wherever it wants to go. But um, once it was realized that they were missing, um, a massive search went underway. 
Okay. Two days left. Yeah. Air and sea rescue teams spent three days looking for the missing couple. Jesus. All right. Um, eventually, some of the Lonergan's diving gear washed ashore. Mm-hmm. All right. I do know that it said, um, I believe it was like about six months later, right after um, this whole incident had right. happened, that um, a fisherman um, in the area had come across a, a dive slate. A dive slate. Okay. okay. And, and um, what a dive slate is, it's... Um, it's like a it, it's an accessory that's used to um that divers use to be able to write underwater. Okay. So it's like a picture, like a like a whiteboard. Like a whiteboard where yeah, they and, can write and point and it, stuff out or something. Yeah, and you can write words or messages. Right, right, and, right. And it doesn't erase and it's underwater. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So when the slate was um found, okay, it was it read, quote to anyone who can help us, we have been abandoned on Agincourt Reef, 25th January 1998, wow. 3 p.m. Please help us. Come to rescue us before we die. Help. End quote. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Imagine writing that note. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like we said, uh, the amount of fear right. being stranded in the ocean. Yeah, having to write that. Oh, my God. Damn. Damn. So... So that is that is at least one thing you try to do. You do whatever you think you can do. You write on the slate and you hope it hits land. Absolutely. I, I Jesus. I'm wondering too. Although I don't know how it would work because obviously you're scuba diving and whatnot. But I wonder if there was some um like on scuba gear or something. I, I wonder if they give you like an emergency, like like maybe like a flare gun. A flare or gun or something. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I'm not too familiar with that, Neither so am I. I don't know. But um, that makes sense too. Yeah, some sort of emergency beacon that they can shoot off into the air or something. Right, but it couldn't get wet, or if it did, it would still work. Right, you know what I'm saying? I I don't know if they even have that, but um, that would definitely be beneficial. Mm. But if you only had one, you better make sure that that shot counts. Right, right, the one shot. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, their bodies were never found. Jesus. All right. That could be anything, really. Yeah. So it was assumed that the couple had been attacked by sharks. Hmm. But on retrieval of their wetsuits, uh, there was no indication of shark attacks. No. So it's interesting. There were no, you know, um, bite rips. marks or right. rips, um, or at least rips big enough that, that indicated, you know, a sh shark attack, right? There was no blood. Right. You know? Right. So that made more means that they took it off, right? Yeah, I thought about this too because it made me um curious because I don't know why why I don't know why or how you would find um their wetsuits or, or wetsuits would wash ashore, but where were the bodies? Right, you know what I'm saying? Who knows? And they could have they could have bloated and sunk, you know, maybe, things like that. Maybe, but then. Or even bloated and floated away. But how would the wetsuit come off? You know what I'm saying? Like that's true. Like a, they may have taken it off, right? I don't know. Yeah, you, you would think, but I don't know why. Like that would be the last thing that I would take off because wetsuits are made to keep you warm. Mm -hmm. All right. So if the water, like you're in the water, you're not going to get hot. No matter you know, even if you're tired, right? You know, you're not going to get hot. That you know. So I don't know. That's it. You did say it was 3 p.m., did you not, when they wrote the message? Mm -hmm. So maybe they did take it off at the same time. Maybe the water was a little bit warmer and they were thinking. I don't know. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. That means that had to mean that they died at least within a week or a little less than that. Yeah. I don't Damn. know. They were never found in that. I mean, because it, it took two days, right. you know, for them to be realized that they were missing. Right. So when the search team went out, you know, people went back to the same exact spot that they were at, the dive spot. People went under. They, they were searching all over. all over. Nothing. Wow. So, you know, 48 hours, right? Right. For, 48, yeah, 48 yeah. hours. And then no trace Jesus. of them. But here's where it gets a little, you know, some little twists come in. Mm -hmm. 
So was it a matter of negligence on the dive company, you know, on their part and the captain? Okay. You know, or does the story have more twisted pieces of the puzzle that we are unaware of? All right. Twisted pieces like how? Well, let's see. Here's some, yeah, here's some interesting things that were found, you know, when people were researching and trying to find um, information about Tom and Eileen. Okay. So, Tom and Eileen kept diaries, okay? Okay. And when discovered, it was said that they were filled with some disturbing entries. So now, could this whole event have been staged, all right? Or could it have been a suicide or a murder-suicide? You mean like a double suicide? Yeah, like um, where... Basically, murder suicide. I Eileen was was the result of a murder suicide. Like her husband killed her. Basically, killed her and then killed knowing, himself. And then, yeah, yeah. You know, Tom seemed to be super depressed, and uh, Eileen was unhappy with her life. Okay. Oh, see that adds to the story. Right. Yeah. Um, in their journal entries, it was mentioned that they both hated their teaching careers. Hmm. Okay. Tom wrote, quote, I feel like a student who has finished an exam. I feel that my life is complete and I am ready to die. End Interesting. Quote. All right. Eileen's own writing was concerned with Tom's apparent death wish. She wrote two weeks before their trip that he wished to die. A, quote, quick and peaceful death, end quote. Hmm. All right. Eileen went on to write, quote, Tom's not suicidal, but he's got a death wish that could lead him to what he desires, and I could get caught in that, end quote. So you should have left after she wrote that. Yeah. Um, no, that's when you leave. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess... You know, being a wife, she's probably loyal to her husband. He's going through some, I don't know, weird thoughts. But I, I, I guess um, he I mean, needs help. I, or yeah, he I, definitely needed help. But yeah. the way I was thinking of it is like, damn, if you know this, if you know his writings are like this dark, why did she not like attempt to seek help for him or try to have somebody to intervene so he's not thinking stuff like that? You know, because he didn't have to, he, if he wanted to wish death, he could have wished death on himself. He didn't have to bring his wife into this. True. Very yeah. true. You're if, if this is the case. Right. You're absolutely yeah. right. I mean, it did say, though, too, in, in um, Eileen's diaries, you know, she had written, too. You could definitely tell that her style and, and the way that she was writing her thoughts and whatnot, she, she was definitely depressed as well. Oh, you know, man, like she, she was unhappy. That sucks. Yeah. So you, you, you begin to think, mm -hmm. you know, because um, could this have been planned? Could they have planned this then, the whole it, thing? It could go that way, yeah. They could have planned it. it. It would be a very easy thing to plan. You know, they know they're unhappy. They're depressed. They know, obviously, if you're left in the ocean, you're going to die. Right. This is a way, you know, to end it all, doing something that we love together. I mean, I, yeah, I can see it. I can see it. But I also see, like, the holes in their theory, too. Right. One of them being like the, you said earlier on when they were doing the head count, two people would jump back in mm -hmm. and they miscounted. Right. So that actually adds to the story more than, you know, them wanting to swim off to go die. Mm -hmm. Because let's say if those two people weren't miscounted, mm -hmm. they would have been like, oh shit, somebody's missing. And they would have gone and found them. And if at that time they tried to like evade them, they would probably be pulled onto the boat by force mm -hmm. because they're not trying to be liable. They would probably like force them back on the boat and end that suicide attempt, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. So it seems like a comedy of errors, but of errors, but it does seem like they could have pulled that off too. And they just got lucky with that miscount. Yeah. That whole um, headcount thing was the most important thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it got messed and up. And it got messed up. You know. There is one more possible option that was brought up and police had discovered it because, you know, they had to investigate, obviously, the whole situation when mm -hmm. it happened. Mm -hmm. They had come across the captain of a ship or, you know, who does the same same thing, brings tourists out so right. they can do their thing. 
the police talked to this captain a day after, right? A day okay. after this situation had happened. And the captain had said that when he was giving the tour and the people were at the end, that um, the head count, there were two more people than in the beginning See? of the... Of the whole thing. Of the whole tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. The captain also said that he remembers hearing American voices, even though the whole ship was full of Italian tourists. Okay. So everyone was speaking Italian because they were all Italian. And then the head count. And then, you know, the there were two extra people there. And the captain remembers hearing American, um, American voices. Yeah, English. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. That's that's very interesting. I didn't know that they were all Italian, but or the majority anyways. Right. Well, this was like uh, the next tour group that went through. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, uh, the cops had asked. Oh, okay. I see, see the story you're coming. Okay, yeah. okay. I was, you know what? I was thinking kind of silly. But yeah, I see what you're saying now. Yeah. So this was something completely different, but it was wow. a different boat. I mean, same Boat uh, group company, you know what I'm saying? Different captain, different groups of tourists. This mm-hmm. time they were all Italian. Cops asked the guy, you know, and then this is that was what he had said, you know. Did they did they try to like profile the the two that was extra counted? No, because they. I mean, they didn't really seem. It didn't seem anything weird. But at this time too, nobody was reported missing. Ah, I see. So it was just weird, you know. The, the guy was just like, "Yeah, it was weird because there there were two more people." I would, if that's the case, I would question, you know, how far apart these two voyages were. It was a day. It was a, oh, okay. So that's why it was a day. And to the same spot. A day after, yeah. Interesting. So, but if that was true, though, that means that they spent one day in the ocean. Mm-hmm. So you know, um, Tom and Eileen, they surface, they realize their go- boat's gone. Mm-hmm. They survived the evening. Mm-hmm. This new tourist boat comes, okay, and rescues they, them. <laughs> they well, they board the ship, right. you know, uh, and pretty much then they would disappear forever. That's the because as of right now, everyone thinks or believes, you know, that they died. That no died. one ever found their bodies, right? And you were saying that they didn't have any shark attacks or no blood or nothing, nothing like malicious from like life in right. the water, right? And you pointed out too, like um. The um the wetsuits. Why would you take off the wetsuits? Why would you that take off the makes, wetsuits? I don't understand that. Right. It's interesting. It makes for a, a more interesting story. Right. And it's, if it's from the 90s, if they're still alive somewhere, that means they're going on, what, like 30-something years? Well- Not y- saying anything? Yeah. The, uh, I mean, an interesting thing is that there, there have been reports of people seeing the couple after the date that they were supposedly dead. There you go. Or okay. going on 20 years. Yeah. The only issue with this, though, is that if they did plan this to be able to disappear from their life, right? Because they were unhappy and whatnot, their bank accounts mm-hmm. have remained untouched this, to this entire day. time. Okay, okay. Their passports were left behind. Okay, and their life insurance policies were never cashed in. Right. So they haven't. If they disappeared, if this, if you know, if they had planned and. This was all a part of it, and they disappeared and started a new life. Mm-hmm. They did it without any of that stuff. That's a okay. hell of a way of starting a new life. You're basically just erasing your life. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's interesting. Hmm. That was the third option. The third option of what could have happened. Do you do you believe that, though? How, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you say on you yourself believing it? Believing what? Believing Which, that that third option happened. That they dis- uh, that this was planned. And yeah, that this was planned. They just disappeared. Me personally, uh, I don't think that that's really what happened. Okay. I, I don't think. I don't think that. Um. Yeah. You yeah. know. I, I don't think that it could it's have unlikely. gone that way. It's it's very unlikely. Mm. Although, once again, you never know, and it is very strange about the um. The captain who reported, you know, about the extra two, the extra two people, people on his boat. And, All Italian, except for them. And then it is a little interesting, too, about, you know, the reports by many different people of saying that they've seen mm-hmm. this couple around the world since right. this, since their supposed uh, death. But I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, but they're American, aren't they? They are. Yeah. So if they're American, I mean, if they've been seen somewhere, mm-hmm. they would love, you know, America loves to report on people that are missing that's supposed to turn up. You know what I mean? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's interesting how they got a, got away if if that's the case. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons why too we want listen or all our listeners and fans to uh, definitely please let us know. Please, yeah. So the captain of the this whole thing, you know, the captain Naren, he was brought to court, charged with unlawful killing. Jesus. Okay. He, Definitely negligence. He was found not guilty, but the company was fined after they pled guilty to negligence. There you go. Which basically ended up putting them out of business, drained everything. Yeah. They're done. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if that basically just messed up the entire like scuba diving business in Australia for a long time. Absolutely. Can you imagine being yeah. responsible for leaving two tourists Two behind? tourists, American tourists, yeah. And they disappeared. Disappeared. Like, can you imagine being held responsible for that? Oh yeah. Like they they held they hold everybody responsible. I mean, it's it's if you we already just pulled out the negligence card, which was it had to be so. But there was like so many oversights from that story that they did. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. You know, um, there was a movie made uh, in 2003 okay. based on this and the Lonergan's Last Days Alive in the Ocean. Mm-hmm. The way that the movie was portrayed... Uh, have you ever seen it? No. Did you ever see it? Okay. No, no, no. The way that the movie portrayed their fate was that that they were uh, ultimately attacked and killed and eaten by sharks. By sharks. Yeah. Which I have seen the movie. I saw the movie a few times. Okay. Not bad, not like I said, not a hundred percent accurate. And right. like we know, uh, like as we know, we don't really know a hundred percent what happened. Like okay. I said, the movie portrayed it as they were killed by sharks, right? But one possible fate, right? Let me know what are, what are your thoughts and opinions, my man. What do you? How, how do you feel? It, was it with this a, just a terrible, tragic event? Definitely tragic. Definitely was it. Yeah. Was it planned or did they did they disappear? Are they still alive somewhere? What, what so, do you think? I don't I don't know about the whole that they're alive, especially not in these times. Yeah. Maybe they could have made it up to like 2012 or something like that, but we have cell phones. Mm-hmm. There there are people that will take pictures. Oh my god, I've seen you remember this group from 98? We found them and they will track these people down and find them. Something right. like this where it has already you know, it's American people who've died in another country. So that's no matter what, it's an international affair. So if ever now they were found, they better be like completely off the grid. <laughs> well, that's what I'm like saying. Not I, even near technology at I'm, this point. That's what I'm saying. I would assume since they never touched any of their life insurance policy and every, and bank accounts and whatnot, right. if they did plan this and disappear and want to disappear, uh, it seems like they'd be perfectly content on living finding a small little a small island, island and being off the grid yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. maybe, or they can be like a new aborigine or something like that in the middle of australia you know and obviously your yeah. appearance is going to change species. you know definitely what I'm definitely like so you know people could report and be like hey you know i saw those people but like did you really did you really you know? maybe not i don't know. know and obviously like we said it, it could be those people but yeah. they're yeah Things change so yeah. many years and being out, you know, maybe living in the some deserted island or whatnot. So if if that's the if that's the case, then I mean I still I still don't see it. Like they would definitely never again use technology. So it's an mm. interesting it's an interesting story, but I don't think mm. that that happened, honestly. Okay. Ultimately. I think what may have happened is that they definitely died. Right. You know, and Maybe the bodies were consumed, mm-hmm. but maybe not. At the same time, like once you're in like the deep, deep ocean, mm-hmm. you, your body just gets pulled under. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And over there where it's like no man's land in water, the pressure is deep. It's, I mean, it's not deep, but it's heavy. Right. So whatever is going to sink is going to get crushed and collapsed and it's just going to sink further into the ocean never to be seen again. You know what I mean? There's some mm-hmm. parts of the ocean where... We can't even explore because the pressure is too crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So either that or they may have gotten consumed. I mean, in, their bodies may have decomposed very rapidly in the ocean, too. And they were just never seen again like that. Mm-hmm. So, and 
that is a nightmare I do not want to have. So, <laughs> but that shit will never happen because I ain't scuba diving. <laughs> right. So I mean, okay, yeah. so you're leaning with the they fact just, that they probably they um, perished and they, they disappeared. Yeah. yeah, but uh, at the same time, I don't think it's a super uh, suicide either. No, no, I don't think okay. it's a suicide at all, and not a murder suicide. Nah, yeah. I don't know. I don't think about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely uh, makes you think. You know what I'm saying? That um, their gear, you know, gear washed up. Mm-hmm. You know, after this had, uh this event had happened, um, I do remember seeing too that um, eventually, uh, their life jackets right. washed up. Right. All right, which also leaves me, you know, wondering or questioning, like. Why would you remove your life jacket? Life jackets are probably, like I said, besides the wetsuits, one of the most important. That's what's keeping you afloat. That's, I mean, you may be working your ass off trying to swim, but it's still helping you keep afloat. And and if you say if you say something like that, then it brings it back to the murder suicide thing, where the double suicide. Because maybe they wanted to kill themselves and still send something back that (laughs) they knew that people could find. It's crazy. It's a crazy story, man. I know, right? I don't understand, too. Like, the life jacket thing really has me confused. Because right. why would you... Take that off to... if Yeah. I mean, the only thing that I could think of, right, that, that makes sense, possibly... Possibly. Is that, you're right, maybe they got so dehydrated and um, not Loopy. thinking yeah. correctly... Yeah. That they got so tired and just wanted to give up and then, you know, maybe unhooked their life jackets and then just sank. Right. But then... Can't happen. Then what about their wetsuits, you know? Why Why would they let it go? Why, why I would, mean, maybe yeah. they wanted to take it off and like, like I said, just say, you know, this is what we're sending back so they know that we we died or that we lived or whatever. Maybe. Yeah. Trying it's, to send some, you know, subliminal messages or whatnot. Right, like, right. I mean, they definitely message. wrote on that message on that, uh, the diver's ledger, Actually, the ledger. Yep, yep. Yeah. And the way, even the way it was, like the way it was written, what did they say? Let's go back to it. To any to anyone who can help us, we have been abandoned mm-hmm. on Eigen Court Reef. And then, Please rescue us before we die. Yeah. Help. Yeah. With like three exclamation marks in the quote, which yeah. means yep. it it had like that sense of urgency. Panic. Panic. So maybe it wasn't a murder suicide, or maybe they wrote it with that idea of, you know, maybe we're staging this. Right. So it's it's an interesting exactly. story. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's why um, there are many ways that you can go and we'll never know because unfortunately um, their bodies were never found. They never found. Jesus. Which, you know, it does make you sad kind of like, and I would definitely be, like I said, that would be my worst nightmare um, ever to be stranded and left alone like mm-hmm. in the ocean. I would have a panic attack. I would, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, I, right. I don't know what I would do. <clears throat> that's why you're but, never gonna dive bro but, <laughs> don't get in the water <laughs> just kidding but, yeah. but still so Whew. you know uh, we're never gonna know what really happened to the Lonergans but we got ideas we definitely you know do we definitely and, do and to all our listeners and fans you know hit that message option on anchor Please let us know your thoughts and opinions. Yes, we would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. On was it. this tragic story? You know, was it a planned suicide, or are the Lonergan still alive somewhere? Right. You know, please let us know. Let hit us that. Know. Hit that message option on Anchor. Please. That's about it, my man. It's I'm a crazy story, man. Yeah, wild story. I do. Um, a story that interests me, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's, I mean, obviously, that's why we did it. I always, um, the first time I ever saw the movie, you mm-hmm. know, it, I was intrigued by it. And um, just because I thought, like, how terrifying that that situation could be and right. was, you know what I'm saying? Right. Oh, Jesus, the fear factor for real. Yeah. But then once, again, once you find out, too, that, you know, you know, maybe it could have gone this way or that way. It makes it a little more interesting right. as well. Gives you something to think about for sure. Right. So, 
Before we go, we want to give a special shout out and thank you to our editor, Deirdre. You know, fans loving your work. Thank you very much. Loving it very, very much. Absolutely. Thank you. We do want to take a quick minute and shout out some people worldwide or some countries. Yeah, we can hit it up. So looking at uh, all of the uh, statistics for Anchor, we've noticed that we are being listened to in a number of countries. We didn't think that it would ever, you know, get this far this fast, I guess, as far as moving outside of the U.S. So we just wanted to shout you out. Uh, We have people in New Zealand, in Germany, United Kingdom, Canada, Ecuador, Australia, Malaysia, and India. Want to say thank you and shout outs to all of you. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Huge shout out to you guys. Thank you so much. We appreciate you guys taking the time to to listen to to us. And Mm -hmm. uh, we hope you guys continue. Please. And let me throw one more thing in there. Um, If you guys would like to message in, it would be really, really interesting if when you guys message in and you s- send a message, tell us where you're from so we can get an idea and what episode you listen to. You know what I mean? If you want to give us a little bit of a longer message on what you thought about the episode, that would be great. Absolutely. That's a good call. Um, definitely, yeah. if you if you do use that message option, definitely shout out where Please. you're from. Let us know because that would be super important. It would be super, it would be super cool too because yeah. um, uh, as far as you guys may know or not know, this is more of a a U.S. focused uh, podcast. Right. But the title is, it's all relative. So it could be worldwide too. Absolutely. So it would be so much, it would be very interesting to get more opinions, you know what I mean? Outside of the U.S., how they see us, how they see these stories, you know, how they see our perspectives. Absolutely. Hit us up. Please. Show the love. We would definitely appreciate it. Yes, sir. Also, a special shout out to our day oneers. Shout out to the day you oneers. Know, absolutely. Thank you for your continued love and support. Thank you. Your positive reactions and yes. words. You know, you guys' support to the podcast is is something huge, very important to us, you know. And as always, we see you guys and we love you. And we love you a lot. Two day oneers that I would like to shout out this week. Um, one being James Wafula. And that Wafula. is, yes, james.wafula.589-5834. That is his Instagram. And his Instagram. I believe right now um, he's holding it down for New York. Shout out. Okay. Also, I would like to shout out Michael Fegadel. Okay. And that is Mike Fegadel on Instagram. He's holding it down for Florida. He is actually um, my cousin. Okay. Uh, recently married, I believe actually they just had, um, I I believe it was their one year anniversary. So congratulations Congratulations. on that. You know, I love and miss you. He was definitely like, you know, my closest, my closest cousin, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Growing up. So like I said, love and miss you. Hope you're doing well. Um, you know, but we want to thank you both for always showing us love and showing the podcast love. Yes, sir. I do have one as well. Uh, shout outs to my brother, Kingsley. Uh, Kingsley Adeyemi. We're going to shout him out. Shout Absolutely. out, Mr. Adeyemi. Salute, brother. And you should come to New York. <laughs> shout but, out. Shout outs. And he's he's just been great. He's always been encouraging me, encouraging you by proxy, you know, giving us a good advice, especially when it comes to sound. He's all about the sound. He has his own podcast. May have to link it. Nice. Um, and... He's really helped out. So I really want to say thank you, brother. I love you. You know, thank you for giving me the advice to help increase the quality of how this podcast sounds. Absolutely. Thank you for the love and support. Yeah. It always means a lot. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, you want to shout out your social media? Sure. Um, the first one would be uh, Twitter, and that would be Retro Show R E T R O S H O. And go. if you see the if you see the Kermit, you know it's me. And for the Instagram, that's Tunday 2017. You'll see me and my lovely mom. Nice. Yes, sir. And as always, you guys could always find me at Josh underscore Toth3. That's my Instagram. Bless. And my Facebook is Joshua Toth. Um, lastly, please continue to spread the word. Please. And find us on Apple, Spotify, Anchor, Google, 
YouTube. YouTube. By using one or all of those platforms, please continue to show us love and subscribe, follow, comment, share, click the five-star rating on Apple. You know, like we've said before, those little clicks and, you know, when you guys hit those those rating marks, uh, it really helps us yeah, and does. the podcast, and we really helps appreciate it. So, all right, my man, that's a wrap. All right. We want to wish you all out there a happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yeah, everybody Good be Friday safe. Good Friday as well. Yes. Be safe, and uh, we'll see everybody soon. Yep. We all love right. you. We love you. Peace. Peace out.